Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're looking at two Mega Drive clones, little handheld versions. So, I got this one ages ago in a chop lot, and this one was already working. I bought this one recently, 40 off eBay, I think it was £5 or £5.50, something like that, and it said that there's uh, no signs of water damage, no signs of any damage. Speaker wires looks like they've been replaced, but they can't find anything wrong with it. And I thought to myself, oh, is it the same one as this one? Pulled this one out, and they are slightly different, but yet this one now is not turning on. The on and off switch just seems to have no resistance at all but as far as I know the last time I used this it was working fine so I think this one might be an easy fix I think this one might be quite challenging but although they're cheap items who knows it could be an interesting one now I did pop batteries in this earlier and nothing's happening at all what's really weird is the way even the batteries have been done so let me zoom in and show you you can see that this side is going to be the negative of the battery and also obviously it says there with the picture and this is the positive now that's normal for a positive but look at the way that positive's been done there that looks really weird doesn't it it looks like it's a negative but then it's just been chopped in half let's take it apart and see should we do this one to begin with because this one should be uh, this one should be an easy one now this is one that you charge up i have charged it up and uh uh, I think the light went out, so it looks like it's charged, but this on and off switch is doing nothing whatsoever. Now, it could be just a case that it uh, has come out of place, but I don't know why that would be. So let's start with this one here, and then we can move on to that one, which will be more challenging. Right, we've got a load of little crosshead screws. Okay, well there's a tiny little bit of plastic there. I bet you that is from the on and off switch, which is annoying. Yeah, that's just clipped in. Here we go. Right, uh, yeah, yeah, the on and off switch, there's nothing there. Look, that's quite irritating. So, it must have got a whack and it's just sheared right off. You can see the plastic, that, that little plastic thing here. See this little thing? There, that's broken off from here. Okay, let's pop the board out. Yeah. So it's this little switch down here that we need to deal with. Right, I don't think that can be fixed. I wonder if I have any small little switches that can uh, go on there. Right, so what we've got, three prongs there and then a few anchor points. I've got this one here, which is basically, again, from the same job lot, but this isn't one of these, it's one of these. A real, you know, like cheap, nasty one, but you know, it plays, uh, it plays the games and stuff. What it would if it had charging. So uh, yeah, oh sorry, I went to do that. Look, there isn't any buttons here. <laughs> so that to me looks to be the same as that. Let's just see if it is actually working. So let's go to continuity. And I presume, is that them two? Yeah. So then if I go to here, that's probably gonna be on. Yeah. So it's working. Now we have to take that off without causing damage, which is easier said than done, because I can't just add heat to that, because then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna melt this thing here. So I think this is a prime candidate for low melt solder. So I'm gonna get my soldering iron on, tiny bit of low melt solder, rub it around the edge, and hopefully this will lift straight off, and then I can put the, that, it back onto the other board with just normal solder. So I'm using this stuff here. Super expensive, but you only use a tiny bit of it. So because this will bring the temperature right down, it means I can remove the iron and then it will stay molten for hopefully another good, like, you know, 20 seconds or something afterwards.
There you go, you see how easy that comes off. There we go. Right, now let me get some solder wick and whip that up. Okay, so that's the pads cleaned. I'm just going to get some isopropyl alcohol and rub it around there, make it nice and shiny again. Okay, so you can see that's nice and clean there. Let's see how well this one is going to fit on. Let me just clean this up a bit. I think that will do. Well, to be fair, it looks like the exact same switch, doesn't it? So if I can get it on there, I think that's gonna work just fine. Right, I'm not going to add flux to this because I don't want to get a load of flux in that switch. I think they are going to be just fine. The solder has flux in it anyway. And Yes, that clicks nicely. Let's see if continuity works. There. There, okay. Well, we'll see. 
I mean, I, could, I didn't test it before. We'll see if that's going to uh, see if that's going to work. Ha ha. Oh well that's annoying. It's broken again because when I put it on here, do you know what? Maybe you have to put this on afterwards. That broke incredibly easy. So maybe that was near enough ready to break from the very time and just through use. Do you know what I mean? From installation maybe that was ready to break and just through use it's broken. Right, well that doesn't, I don't think that pops out. Well, here we go. Yeah, so you've got to put that on afterwards and that will clip into place. Ah, oh, well that's really annoying. Okay, I am just gonna do this off camera because uh, there's no point in wasting your time. You've seen what I did, I just have to do it again. Now I do have more spare boards off these, so I'm just gonna take another one off and uh, redo it. This time when I put it back together, I'm gonna do exactly the same, but I'm just gonna put the switch in afterwards and that way then it won't foul against the top and snap off just like, uh, just like it did. That is irritating though. Okay, so we've got it back on here. Now let's see if it's gonna work. It's working on continuity. Right, let's see if this clicks into place now. Yes, it does. Excellent, right, easy when you know how. Okay, here goes. Hmm, nothing. Let me get the charger. Okay, let's see what it's going to do. Well, we've got a light there. Let's see if it turns on now. Yeah, we've got a light here now. And there we go. Right, so it was just the uh, on and off switch had snapped off. And then, uh, yeah, when I refitted it, it snapped again, which was really irritating. But at least I know now it was just a case of putting this in afterwards and then it works. And let's just use the magic. There we go. Right, okay, so it looks like this one is now working fine. Let's move on to this one here. I think this is gonna be more interesting. It's 
the batteries don't even fit in properly when you do it like this. That's really weird what's going on there. On. And you see there's nothing happening. Well, let's take it apart and see if we can work out what's what. Maybe we can measure some voltages or something. Right, while I'm taking this one apart, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. So this month, the Massive members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Edensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Lowbook Auto Sales, DJVG, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Albert at www.faroutsounds.co.uk, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbert, Pigsy, Brain and Butts from Connecticut, and last but very much not least, the My Mate Vince Fan Club. Now, if you're not aware about the My Mate Vince Fan Club, it's a group set up over on Facebook by Anders and also where uh, Emma runs it as well. And uh, basically they've got, I think they've got a thousand members now. And I've got a little note here to remind you guys to shout out the frogs. If you do want a chance of winning the frogs, then uh, yeah, sign up to uh, head over to the My Maintenance Fan Club on Facebook and uh, you might be in with winning them. Unlucky you. Right, well, this does look normal here. This does look normal. So we're gonna have, yeah, so we start from here and then it goes to here, that connects to there. So they're in series, that goes to there and that goes to there. So basically we should have 4.5 volts between here and here, which I think we're going to have. Let's just see if we've got 4.5 volts. Well, we'll have a little bit more, won't we? 4.8 or 4.9. Yeah. So that is gonna be going through to the board because I'm right on the actual. Contacts there, yeah, 4.8, right. So this is going to be awkward unless I get my bench power supply over, which I might do. So let's just make sure we have got continuity between here and here. We have. And here and here. We have. So now, let's take the board out completely. What is causing this? Same switch again. So let's not make that same mistake. Let's pop this out now while we can. There we go. And let's get rid of this screen. There, the screen look okay? Yeah. All right, so it's got no, uh, has it got a little LED or anything to let you know when it's on? It hasn't, has it? No. But if the screen was faulty, surely you would still hear something coming out the speaker. Oh yeah, look, that speaker's been really mangled up. You can see there's a lot of bad soldering going on there. Unless, of course, the volume was down. That's a possibility. What should we do? Well, let's just check the on and off switch, make sure that's working, and let's have a close look at the board, see if we can see anything that's faulty. Right, well the switch is definitely working, that's fine. Let's measure the speaker. Right, I don't think that speaker's doing anything. Right, well it doesn't look like that speaker's doing anything. Let's go straight onto here. 
No, right, I'm gonna unsolder that, just in case that's putting a fault on. Maybe it's shorting, let's just see if there's a, a ground on here, whether it's short into ground. So let's take the negative from the battery. No. I'm gonna unsolder it anyway, because it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's connected. Just trying to clean this up a little bit, see if I can work out what's going on. Not sure why that, there's that second bit of metal there. Let's zoom out and see if we can get an ohms reading on it now. Maybe that other bit of metal is where the actual wire goes to the speaker and these are just the contacts that you solder to. I know it doesn't really matter because we haven't got the thing working yet, I'm just curious. Right, so you can see this definitely not working there. Let's go to that second bit of metal. No, so this speaker is not going to work. So obviously the wires on the inside have been uh, melted away or eroded away or something. Because we should be getting some kind of ohm reading on that and we're not whatsoever. Whether we go there or whether I go onto that separate little bit of metal there. No, okay. Right, let's put the screen back on. Connect power up to it. And turn it on. Well, I suppose the problem I've got is that it could be the fact there's no speaker connected and it could be that the screen's failed. In which case then, it could be working right now, but I don't know it. So maybe we should get a speaker to uh, connect up to it and maybe I should see in my uh, bag of spares, you know, from these ones here, whether or not there's a screen that might fit. I mean, is that screen cut oh, no, Look, screen's different size, look. The screen's a different size there. Well, I found a little speaker here and it looks to be the same design really as this. It looks exactly the same. So let's see what this is reading. Again, go to resistance. Mmm, isn't that interesting? Right, well, I mean, it's it's taken out, so maybe it was maybe it was faulty. Maybe that's the reason I took it out off when I was fixing the job lot. I think we need to take apart this one and have a look at the screen and the speaker from this one. Well, let's see what this speaker is measuring. Yeah, there you go, seven ohm speaker. Well, eight ohm speaker. Yeah, so uh, yeah, that speaker's faulty, and obviously the one I had in the box is also faulty. Well, this screen's different again. Look, because this is widescreen and this isn't. This is four by three. So uh, yeah, this isn't going to. Oh, of course, this is soldered onto the board. Not that I remember now. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's unsolder the speaker.
Yeah, there you go, we're getting a reading now. Eight ohms, excellent. All right, let's put the power back in and see now if we have any sounds coming out of this. Here we go, I heard something. There we go. Listen to that. Excellent. Right, okay. Now let's connect the screen up. So it looks like maybe the screen's gone faulty. I'm thinking the screen goes in that way round, doesn't it? It has to, because that's how, yeah, it has to go in that way. Right, now let's see what it's doing. And turn it on. Now, so we've got zero amps. Turn it on. It's gone straight up to uh, 90 milliamps. But yet there's nothing on the screen. Let's hit one of the buttons. Here we go. Now, is the screen faulty? Or is it something on here which is not displaying? So we know the game itself is working. Just wiggling it about, see if it'll come to life. I'll tell you what we could do. We could connect it up to a TV and see if we get AV out. Let's do that. Right, uh, AV. Um, let's turn it on. Right, so what are we now? Zero there, let's turn it on here. And it's gone to 40. Oh, here we go, right. Well, there it is. So, I can't go up or down or anything, but let's see if I can just click connect. Yeah, right. So, the actual thing itself, so this is Alex Kid, that's working fine, but it's just the screen that's not working. Now, is the screen not working? Seconds. Is the screen not working because the screen's faulty, or is it something on the board causing the screen not to work? Now, this is an awkward one because I haven't got another one to swap it over with and I don't really know how far to take it. Hmm, a bit weird to have the speaker and the screen go faulty. Right, so you see this thing here, this is 4x3, this actually takes the Mega Drive games themselves but if you look when I turn it on it's displaying down the bottom, you can't really see it because it's all smashed but let's pop that in here, I wonder if it's going to be the same one, it might be. What might be easier is if I put this screen in here. Right, so which way does that go? That goes that way. Do you know what? They look they look to be the same size. Oh yes. Oh my god, it what oh my word! Wow! Well, the screens for this, I think, were... Oh, God, that's a while ago now on a video, but I think it was up on 30 or something pounds. So the very fact that I bought this for five pounds, even if it means if I get this working out, of it is going to be a success. Fantastic. Right, well, the screen's all right, isn't it? So there's something on the board causing it not to work. Now, let's... Uh... Oh, that's really interesting that you can swap the parts around like that. I'm really lucky. Very lucky. That's great now because that means that this one would uh, work and this one works off cartridges, which is nice. Right, so let's just double check now if I was to get this broken one and put it in here just to make sure it's still not displaying. So what's causing it not to display? And how am I going to fault find that?
Hmm. Okay. Well, look, we've got something more to go on now, haven't we? So, let's get rid of this. We know it's not the screen. That's great news. What is it, though? Is it just going to be something under the blob chip? Should we measure for shorts and stuff on the capacitors? Because some of them do look a little bit grey. They don't look very nice and soldery, you know, nice and silver. Let's measure for shorts on there. I don't think it's going to be the crystal, because I'm sure the crystal is probably to do with the timing of the chip rather than the display. So uh, let's get our ground from here, the negative. And I've just got it on continuity. Just making sure none of them are loose. Hmm, that's interesting. That fuse is on a ground. Is that right? Yeah, that looks like a ground, doesn't it? Do you know what? I wonder, could it be a backlight problem? It is possible, isn't it? So let's pop the screen back in and shine a light on, because if it's a backlight problem, then again, we'll have more to, uh, more to go on. Yeah, 100% it's in there. I think it's a backlight issue. Yeah, now, if it was a perfect screen with just no backlight, then I would research the backlight. The thing is though, the whole thing seems to be just off center. I wish I could show you. I wonder if I can, uh... there you go, you can really see it now. They're the games. But they shouldn't be off center like that, should they? What's happened down this side? So now, is that a backlight thing, or is that something else? The whole thing looks off. Oh, I don't know what to do. Let's turn the lights on. We're certainly making progress, but it's still confusing me. Because if it was a backlight thing, let's turn it off. If it was a backlight thing, I would just be tracing these two wires here. Can you see these two at the back here? These two. Mind you, we know the backlight here is okay, don't we? But where does it go to on the board?
Right, so that must be the backlight, these two here. And they go off on those two, near the middle. So they're going to be going underneath somewhere, aren't they? Let's take this off. They're going to be going underneath. I don't know where. I wonder is there corrosion or anything sat underneath here? I am struggling. I don't know where to take this. See, it could be some sort of a blob chip where it's displaying externally but not internally on the internal display. Right, leave it with me a while. I'm not really sure what to do. I might just try reflowing a few things. I might just add a little bit of solder to these, make sure that they're all okay. Uh, I might just try to reflow these connections here, just in case that makes a difference. So before doing the reflow, I just want to double check this AV out connector, because the thing with the AV out connector is that often when you plug the plug into it, then it will disconnect, for example, the internal screen. So if that was faulty, which it could be, then maybe that would explain why it's working on the AV out, but not on the screen. Anyway, I unsolder this and it's not working. And then I realized that I have to actually jump the two pins together to allow the path to travel through it the same way it should when there's nothing plugged into the actual jack. So I do a little jumper wire between the two points, but uh, unfortunately still nothing displays on the screen. So there's uh, nothing really left for me to do apart from try to reflow the actual screen connector and also all the capacitors and the resistors either side off that screen connector because they do look a little bit dull so there is a chance that maybe underneath the screen connector there's a bit of corrosion or one of the pins is not making a good connection so on this bit here because there's a plastic connector i'm heating it from underneath the board i've just lifted the board up applying heat underneath it the hot air and then it lifts off nice and easy i'm then just reflowing all the solder contacts and then i need to put it back into place and solder it back into place with the soldering iron and each of the capacitors and resistors i'm just literally just lifting them off and putting them back on again just to make sure that they're making a good connection Okay, so what I've done is I took this thing off here and now I've just reflowed it back on and I took off every single little capacitor and resistor in this area and this area just because they looked a little bit discolored. So let's see now if it's, uh, it's going to do anything. So that's a little bit sticky to get into, so I need to give it a good clean with my PA. Okay. Yes! Excellent! Oh, did we do anything else? Ah, oh, it came on for a second, didn't it? Yes, go on. It might, might have been a bad connection here. There we go. Fantastic. It's there. Brilliant. Right, let's press play. Yep, we've got it. 
Amazing. Fantastic. Right, okay. What do I need to do here? Well, I need to uh, get another little speaker because this is the speaker for the other one that I fixed earlier. And I need to... I might just try to see if I've got a Nintendo Switch speaker. That might do. And, uh, yeah, I need to put it back together and see if it is definitely working with the controls and stuff. Right, so, uh, yeah, it looks like the speaker was faulty and it, I think it was something to do with this Kinect. I mean, there's a chance it could have been some kind of corrosion under here because these do look very dull but I think it was more to do with something on this connector. That's what I reckon. Maybe the backlight or something wasn't lined up properly or maybe some of the pins were missing and the backlight because remember we had a weird thing where it was offset. So uh, anyway, it's working now. Let's just turn it off and go back on again and make sure it wasn't a fluke. Oh, excellent, it's so vibrant, lovely. Okay, I found a pretty small speaker, but it's not ideal because it's not round. But what I've done is I've just snipped away a bit of the plastic on here, and that will then allow this to fit into here. So you can see now that will fit in there into that gap there. There, like so. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, I think we're nearly done. Well, right, here goes. Let's see if it's going to work. Yay! Fantastic. Excellent. Am I going to have sound? Where's the volume? Yes. Ho ho. Ooh. Slow it down a bit. And it all appears to be working. Right, let's see if I can do this. Oh no. Mm, this is not good. Yes, I did it. Right, let's put the other one back together and then, uh, yeah, we should have two fully working consoles at the end of it. So here we have them all back together and this one now is working perfectly again because the on and off switch is now fixed. So just to recap, all this needed was a new on and off switch because it broke, but then when I put the second on and off switch, I broke that as well. So it's obviously quite weak, but it's easy now because all you have to do is make sure you put this on afterwards and then it won't break again. So uh, yeah, a bit of low melt solder, that worked really, really well. And this one here was the more interesting one. So good news is now I can hopefully pick up another one of these very cheaply or another 40 one, and then I can get this one fully working which is good because this is nice because it actually takes the original games. And uh, yeah, for this one now, it, the speaker was broken, so there was no sound and there was no picture either. I can't be certain what was wrong with the actual picture. Let me just turn this one on. But uh, I think what it was, was the, uh, if I was to take a guess, I would say it was the actual connector itself so maybe it wasn't sitting quite right maybe there was a bit of a sort of banana in it a bit of a bow and then when i redid it i suppose it was nice and flat and then it was contacting properly on the ribbon cable either that or the capacitors and resistors either side it could have been but uh, yeah there we go all working 
fine. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. I know these are cheap items, but I think it was still a little bit of fun. I'm gonna look through here now and see what there is. Actually, there's not a huge amount of games on here. Should we do a little bit of Golden Axe? Let's do Sonic. I haven't done Sonic in years. Right, okay, so I'm going to say my goodbyes now, and I'll just play this game out on the, uh, the outro. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you hopefully very soon. Do you know what? I can't be bothered to learn this one. Let's do something else. So many times I've stranded A castaway and I'm now sure Of those stranger in the sky